Hi, this is One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. I pray that today, one voice will be a blessing to you. And above all else, I pray that God's voice will be heard among this God's story. Enjoy today's episode. Hey guys, welcome back to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. I'm so glad that you joined us today. And, you know, I've just been thinking about you guys a lot. And for the next... um, couple of episodes, we're just going to talk a little bit about praise and worship and what it really means to get into the presence of God and to walk in His presence and how praise and worship has the capability and the potential to heal you and to bring the benefits of God in your life. You know, I'll never forget after my dad died, it was October the 28th. And it was like, uh, I think it's been 15 years ago that he died. And I'll never forget it. I was so broken and so wounded. And just, I I was such a daddy's girl. And, And after he passed, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to go to church. I needed to go to church because I knew that if I could get into the presence of God, and just worship. And we did. We found a church like in Dothan, Alabama, because we, we buried him in Ozark, Alabama. And we stayed the night in Dothan, and we we got up on that Sunday morning, and we went to church. And the whole time during the praise and worship, I just wept, and I cried, and I opened my heart to receive from the Lord of what what God can do when we open up our hearts to Him. I'm telling you, He wants to do miracles in our life. When you are grieving, when you are trying to heal of trauma and trying to heal of all the wounds of our past and just trying to heal from life in general, because I can tell you this, you can be healed from one thing and be completely healed of it and tomorrow you have the potential to be wounded all over again maybe not with the same trauma but with something so we're always going to be in need of healing and what that means we're always in the need for our savior to pour into our lives there's nothing like the lord pouring into our lives you know i was just telling someone today that if you really want healing in your life Become the best receiver and receive from the Lord. Receive the healing that He has for you. Receive what He is saying over your life. Receive the breath of God. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the love of God that cast out the spirit of torment. And when you begin to receive all of that, the Lord can come in and reconstruct our lives. He can change our thoughts. He can cleanse our mind. He can cleanse our soul. And I don't know, something just begins to happen when we receive from the Lord. And the best place that I receive from the Lord is during praise and worship. And there's such a powerful thing about praising God. Because I think since we were created to praise, we're always going to be praising something because it's in us. You know, we want to to praise something or praise someone. But when you find God and you understand that, hey, he's my creator, he loves me, he is for me, and the one thing that I can give back to him is my life. I want to give him my life and I want to worship him. So let's just dive in. Will you? Will you dive in with me? Let's just spend the next few minutes learning a couple more Hebrew words about what it means to praise God and to worship God. First of all, the difference between praise and worship. Oh gosh, worship is not just a slow song. It's not just listening to music or playing music or closing your eyes and receiving from God. It's a part of it, but worship is a lifestyle. Worship is giving God what he is worthy of, the praise that he is worthy of. But it's also, you know, as as in the book of Romans, it says, I beseech you, my brethren, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, for this is your reasonable worship. 
So worship involves sacrifice. And the first place that we we see that in the Bible is with Abraham when the Lord told him to take your only son and sacrifice him, give him to the Lord. And he asked, his son asked him, hey, pops, where are we going here? He said, we're going to go up to the mountain. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to worship. What he was saying is, I am going to give God what he's worthy of. I am going to, even though it's going to be painful. See, worship is a cutting away of something. It's cost you something. David said it like this. I will not go before the Lord with something that it has not cost me something. And when we give our tithe and our offerings, it's worship. When you give your time and your talent to the Lord, I think about our Thursday night band practices and the hours that we we have spent, like even in Statesboro, when we were there, and even here in Naples, Florida, the time that everyone, it's a cutting away, it's a sacrifice, and that itself, that that is called worship. You're giving God time, you're giving God your talent, and you are worshiping the Lord when you do that. When you are volunteering at your church, you're worshiping the Lord. When you give an offering, when you help someone in need, you are worshiping the Lord. So there is a huge difference between praise and worship, but it's all going to come together in just a moment. I want us to go in our Bibles and let's look to Psalm 145 verses 1 through 4. And we're going to take it and just dissect it a little bit. It's going to be so much fun. So hang in there with me. And I am believing that when you go to church Sunday or when you are in your car driving, however you love to praise and worship the Lord, it's going to be different and you're going to see things in a different light. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Psalms 145, 1 through 4. I will extol thee, my God. O King, I will bless thy name forever. Every day I will bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and declare thy mighty acts. Okay, let's go back and dissect this a little bit. Let's start with verse 1. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever. Well, the word extol means to be high or raised up, to be lifted up, exalted. It means to be elevated to be in a high position. So really what he is saying when he says, I extol thee, it means I'm putting you in the highest place of my heart. I am setting you on the throne of my heart. That is the highest place that you can put God is on the throne of your heart where he is king of your heart. So he says, I will extol thee. I will put you as king on my heart. I will lift your name up. I will exalt. I will make your name bigger. I will magnify the Lord. I will magnify. I will make you bigger than my problems, God. I will make you bigger than my circumstances. I will make you bigger than all of my fears. I will make you bigger than then all of my doubt, whatever you're going through, when you extol the Lord, it involves lifting him up, putting him as king of your heart, sitting on the throne of your heart and making him bigger than your problems. That's pretty powerful. We're, we're not even finished yet. Let's go into the rest of this, this sentence. I will bless thy name forever. Bless right there means to praise. I will praise thy name forever, but in Hebrew, it's called Barak. So Barak means to kneel as when blessed by adoring on bended knees, to bless, especially to confer a benefit. But it's basically used of sharing oneself, of giving oneself away. It is to say to bow 
one's heart. When your heart bows before the Lord, you become that living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable. So Barak is to literally get down on your knees or to bow your heart, to bow down on your knees, to bow your heart, to bow your will and your ways. As Jesus prayed so well, he said, Lord, not my will be done, but let your will be done in my life. That is Barak. That's worship. That is bowing your will, your way, your heart, your everything to the Lord to kneel down. When is the last time you got on your knees, really got on your knees to praise, to worship Him? When's the last time that you praised God when you didn't feel like it? All right. So a Barak praise is an honoring of so much of God that I praise you when I feel like it and I praise you when I don't feel like it. All right. So let's keep going. Verse two says, every day, every day I will bless you, Barak. Every day I will bow down. Every day I will bow my will down. Every day I will be that sacrifice. Every day I will get on my knees and I will bless your name while I'm bowed down in honor, in respect of who you are every day. That's what David said I'll do. I'll fall down on my knees. I'll fall on my face and recognize who you are by making you bigger in my life and by lifting up your name, your powerful name. It's almost like I can see it as when we lift the name of the Lord up in our lives throughout our day, we started out, God, you are Yahweh. I lift up your name. I bow down my will to you and I declare your will to be done over my life today. If we started that out every day, what would happen in our life? Hey, I'm just going to tell you something. You are about to be amazed about what can happen to your life when you Barak praise the Lord, when you bless the name of the Lord, when you bow your heart, when you bow down before the Lord. Okay, so in verse 2, he says, every day I'm going to bless you and I will praise your name forever. Now, the word praise there is Hallel. And in Greek, it means to acclaim, to boast, to express uncontainable, exuberant praise of Yahweh and His works. It's to give a a praise of jubilee, and it's highly intentional. It's making an open boast of, acclaiming and celebrating in a way where you are rejoicing. And it's like um, you're you're responding to the name of the Lord that you're calling out on, and you are doing it with with glee, with joy, because you know the power of His name, and you know what He is doing in your life. So David said this every day: "I will bless you. I will give you my will. I will set you as king on my heart. I will." bow down to you and I will praise your name. I will make an open boast and I will tell everyone about your works. And and the how I call it a hallelujah praise. When we say when we say hallelujah, it comes from hallel, that jubilant, that highly intentional, an open boast, celebrating and making God's name bigger and magnifying him. It is the highest praise that we can give God. And listen at this. It's so powerful that all over the world, there is no translation for it. It is the same name and the same expression all over the world. Hallelujah. Hallel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's powerful, you guys so powerful. There is no other way to say it than to say hallelujah. So what are you saying? Every day, God, I'm going to come before you. I'm going to sing praises to you. I'm going to shout hallelujah to you when I feel like it and when I don't, because you're God and you're good all the time. Okay. Verse three, great is the Lord and highly to be praised and his greatness is 
is unsearchable. So we're, let's look at two words here. We're going to look at the word great, and we're going to look at the word praised. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Praised is Hallel, the hallelujah praise, but great is this. It's great in comparison, like in rank, it's significance, importance, and distinction. And it's comparatively greater beyond the normal. It's greater than. So what it's saying is when he says great is the Lord, he is saying there's none that is greater than you. There is none that can even compare to you. And it's it's so distinct between the two that there is no comparison at all. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. There's no one else that can compare to it. You can look for love in all the wrong places if you want. But once you experience the great, powerful love of God, nothing else can compare to it. Great is the Lord and his greatness is unsearchable. So let's go to verse four now. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. So let's look at the word praise here. The The word for praise here is Shabbat. And we're going to look at the word praise and declare. So Shabbat means to endorse, to commend, like believers exalting God in full adoration, to commend. It literally means a loud, joyous shout of testimony. It means I am praising God with my life and with my testimony and with my story. What is your story, you guys? What is the storyline of your life? So he says, from one generation, they shall praise, they shall tell their story, they shall endorse God in their story, and it shall be loud and joyous with shouts of a testimony of the goodness of God and proclaiming and declaring their mighty acts. So the word declare right here, it means to place up high to boldly declare like announcing something that is really significant used of expounding making a message clearly understood where it really gets through especially with revelation or otherwise it wouldn't be understood right so when you get revelation you begin to make a declaration and that's what he is saying one generation shall praise you with their testimony. They shall endorse you as their God and that you are the God of their life. You are the God who is writing their story and they will declare this from one generation to the next, expounding the revelations that the Holy Spirit has given them. This is praise. Y'all, this is so powerful. I don't know if it's getting to you like it's really getting to me, but because I'm all about people telling their stories. That's what this podcast is all about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is telling our stories. And and making God bigger than the trauma. Making God bigger than the abuse. Making God bigger than the addiction. Making God bigger than the moral failure. Making God bigger than your circumstances. And making God bigger than all of your fears. Making God bigger than your sickness then the torture, every, anything that you've been through. When we praise God, it has the potential to heal you. Now, Psalm 66 and 20 says, Blessed be God who did not reject my prayer and refuse his mercy. That blessed right there means Barak. It's that Barak praise where, <clears throat> excuse me, to kneel, to kneel down by adoring him and to give yourself away. He says, blessed be God who did not reject my prayer. Now let's go in that word blessed to give oneself away, to bow down, to get on your knees, to bow your heart toward God. All right. So numbers 6, 24 through 26 says the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you peace. Now let's break this down. I went up and I looked up the word blessed because I wanted to, to see if it was the same word. And guess what? It is the Lord Barak you and keep you. So we're going to look up these two words, bless and keep. So bless means Barak. Well, what does that mean then? If I am Barak praising God by kneeling down or um, putting him as king on my my heart or bowing my will to him, what does it mean if he blesses me? Well, when in, in this sense, it is saying it's to pass on a benefit, to confer something. And this typically means to bestow with commitment of his covenant. It's God sharing his benefits by giving his word to bless by bestowing. It's God conferring his benefits on those who love him by his word and bringing them closer to himself. This is so powerful. Listen to this. So the root refers to the life infusing power of the Lord blessing creation saying, I want to bestow goodness on you. So the Lord bless you means I want to bestow goodness on you. I want to give you my benefits. I want to share myself with you. And it literally means when he says he's drawing us close to him, when he blesses us, it literally means he is turning his face toward you. And as you are coming and running to him, he is running just as hard and fast toward you. As your heart is bent toward his, his heart is bent toward yours. As much as you have him as king on your heart, he is carrying you and your name in his heart. The the word says that your name is in his hand. He has written it in his hand. So when we quote that scripture, the Lord bless you, the Lord bless you, it means the Lord is turning toward you, that he is giving you favor, not just favor. Why is it favor? He is sharing himself with you. He is giving himself away to you. Isn't that powerful? I don't know about you, but you know, we sing that song, I give myself away, right? And it's our worship. It's we give him our will. We give him our life. We give him the storyline of our life, but he is giving himself to you. He loved you and loves you so much that he laid his life down and died for you so that you could be blessed. Now, that just does something to my heart. It's deep and it's powerful and it's called Barak. It's called praise. The Lord dances over you. The Lord rejoices over you. He sings songs of praises over you. When you give your heart to the Lord, all the angels in heaven stop and they recognize when one person gives their heart to the Lord and all of heaven is rejoicing. It's so powerful. Why? Because God's heart is bent toward you. When your heart is bent toward him and you Barak praise him, you kneel down, you kneel down your will, your way, you bow it down to the Lord, then he and you you run toward the Lord and your face is on him, your eyes are on him, your face is toward him, and then his eyes are on you, and his face is on you, and he is running toward you. This this is so powerful. So the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The word keep is shamar. It means to guard, to um 
to be offensive as well as defensive in any measure to protect and ready to take aggressive immediate action to safeguard, to be on guard, to speedily engage in confrontation, whatever jeopardizes what is entrusted. A guard on watch, ready to stand guard as a military soldier is standing guard. May the Lord bless you, Barak you, and may the Lord keep you. May he be a soldier guarding your life. He is your guard. He is your shield. Uh, That's so powerful. That's so powerful. Okay, verse 25, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The, the, when the face of the Lord shines upon you, when he turns his face toward you, it goes back to that Barak again, where his favor, his grace, and his mercy is looking toward you. And when his face is toward you and is shining upon you, that means that all of that favor is coming upon you and all of that grace and all of that mercy and it's going to carry you it's so powerful verse 26 the lord lift up his countenance upon you and that means again may he continue to turn toward you and give you peace and give you peace so what he is saying here that the lord is so in love with you that his face is upon you and he wants to bless your life. He wants to give you good things and he wants to give you peace. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord guard you. May he defend you. May he do whatever it takes to go to whatever measures to keep the enemy from destroying your life. And from you destroying your life, whatever it takes. How many of y'all prayed that prayer before? God, whatever it takes, do it. And he says, and the end result is shalom, peace. You know what that means? It means wholeness. It means God's gift of wholeness, bringing his wellness, making you healthy in your spirit, your soul, and your body. That's what God wants to do. He wants to put you together piece by piece, spirit, soul, and body. He wants your thoughts to come into alignment, and he wants you to have peaceful thoughts. It is not God's will for you to fall into deep, dark pits of despair and depression. But when you do, you can praise your way out of it. You can praise. Praise has the ability and the potential to heal you. As you Barak praise the Lord, as you kneel down, as you adore him, as you put him as king on your heart in the middle of depression, in the middle of despair, in the middle of everything. Now listen to this. If you feel despair, it's not because God has put that emotion on you. Where is it coming from? If you feel hopelessness, it's not because God put it on you. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the enemy. Okay? So I get to choose to believe the enemy or am I going to believe God? Am I going to Barak praise God? Because when you Barak praise God, he's going to Barak praise you back. Isn't that something? Okay. This is what's going to happen. When you feel yourself falling into that deep, dark place of depression, if you get down on your knees and you begin to praise God and you put him as king on your heart, and not the thing that made you fall into that depression. So maybe it's anger. Maybe it's loss. Maybe it's grief. Maybe it's confusion. Maybe it's abuse. Maybe it's bankruptcy. Maybe it's divorce. Maybe it's betrayal. Whatever it is. 
What is sitting as king on your heart? And who is sitting on the throne of your heart? Are your problems sitting on the throne of your heart? Are people, have you put people as king of your heart? Or have you put God, Yahweh, Jesus, as king of your heart? And let him sit on the throne of your heart. When you do that, and you allow him to come in and do that, and sit there, now he can navigate. He can navigate your life. He is running toward you. His face is turning toward you. And that's my prayer. You guys, don't give up. Don't stop believing. When you are broken, when you are hurting, when you are discouraged, fall down on your knees. Bow your heart to the Lord. And Barak, praise Him. Give Him everything that is due to Him and worthy. And right now, I just want to pray over you. Lord, I pray, Father, that every person that's listening to this, that they can feel your powerful spirit. They can feel you moving, God, moving upon their heart right now. And Lord, if there's someone sitting in your space, I pray right now that you would nudge that off of their heart and that you would take your rightful place by sitting on the throne of their heart and that Barak praise would arise and out of that Barak praise will come joy will come peace favor mercy and grace and blessings good things good things good things. I just need to tell this to someone. God wants to give you good things. He wants good things to happen to you. He wants you to have a good, healthy, strong life. He wants you to have a good, strong, healthy mentality. He wants your thoughts to be healthy. He wants your heart to be healthy. He wants your soul to be healthy. He wants your relationships to be healthy. And the way we get this kind of health and healing is through Barak praise. And I pray over you in the name of Jesus that praise and worship Barak, hallelujah, and sacrifice, whatever that needs to be sacrificed to you, Lord. We just put it at your feet right now. I want you to think about what you need to sacrifice and what you need to give to the Lord right now, because he's waiting. Give it all to him and praise him forever. Every day, David said, every day I will, Barak, praise you, Lord. Because you're worthy and I put you on my heart. Sometimes you guys, you have to put him there every day. Because people, the world, the enemy, everything else around you, your circumstances, wants to take Jesus off the throne of your heart. And you have to keep putting him back there. And you have to guard your heart and not let anything or anyone else take his place. And when you do that, the Bible calls it praise and worship. And it has the power to heal you, to bless you, and to prosper you, and make you healthy in your spirit, soul, and body. Amen. I love you guys. Thanks for listening to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. If this is ministered to you, I want you to share it with a friend. Just, It's really easy. All you have to do is copy it paste it, send it in a text message, put it on Facebook, wherever you need to to send it, send it to a friend and share it so we can get the good news out of what the Lord is doing one person at a time, one voice at a time. All right. I love you. See you next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to One Voice Makes a Difference. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing and reviewing the show on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Tell your friends about One Voice too. 
Your voice helps the show reach more people and to spread the gospel. If you'd like to hear more about my personal story, you can purchase my book, One Voice, on my website, www.janetswanson.org, or on Amazon and audible.com. You can also connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Most importantly, if you're in a crisis, please call 24-7 Crisis Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Don't wait. Your life matters. 